um, yeah, um, thank you, Pastor Julia, for leading us in worship. And um, just a short word before I pass the time to the minister of the day. Um, I was just reading um, about the, the kingdom in, in the Old Testament um, from Sir King Solomon and to his son Rehoboam. So it's, this was, you can read it at your own time on the Second Chronicles chapter 10 to chapter 12 or the First Kings chapter 11 to chapter 14. Um, we see in the Bible that King Solomon is the wisest man. You know, he's, he's um, and when God asks what he wants, he wants to be, uh, he wants wisdom to be able to rule the people because he's a young man. And God granted him his desire um, to be, you know, for wisdom so that he can rule the nation of Israel. And at the same time, um, God gave him many blessings to abundance of blessings, riches. Um, but one thing that I saw was that he had many wives and he had, he married those um, wives, uh, pagan wives. And because of the influence from the wives and his concubines, um, he built shrines and he also worshipped other gods. And so therefore he, over the time, he forgotten that, you know, God, um, God is a jealous God. God wants um him, you know, uh, God's, um, God says you have, shall have no other gods before him. And because of his wrong choices, you know, in his, um, you know, in, 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 when he's reigning the kingdom, he's in a very good position, you know, the most wisest man, the richest person at that point of time. And yet he make that, that wrong decision. And because of his wrong decision and he refused to turn back and refused and he continues to reject God, even the God have to um, take away the kingdom from him. And he only, that's why Israel was torn apart. Um, you know, the 10 tribes go to a different person, um, Jeroboam, and only two tribes remain under Solomon's, um, um, Solomon's family and pass on to his son called Rehoboam. And so it reminds us, um, me that you know the 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 choices we make as an adult, as a as a parent, uh, affects our children, and it also um, affects the child's um, walk with God. And um, in Second um, Chronicles chapter twelve verse one, um, it says, um, "But when Rehoboam was firmly established and strong, he abandoned the law of the Lord, and all Israel followed him in this sin." So, which means that um, he, when he is, you know, um, strong in his kingdom, you know, his 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 um, his kingdom is established at that point in time. That's when he abandoned the Lord, and he led the whole nation of Israel, um, those that are under him, uh, to follow him in this sit in the uh, worshipping other gods. And the sad part of the story that says, you know, in the end of it, in verse 14, 2 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 14, it says, but he was an evil king, for he did not seek the Lord with all his heart, all his heart. So, you know, it just makes me reflect that, you know, um, Rehoboam knew God. Because he, he knew God, he knew the law of the Lord and that he chose to reject God and he abandoned him. And he didn't abandon him because, um, you know, at that point of time where he was at the lowest at the peak, but he ab abandoned God when he was firmly established and strong. You know, so, and he is remembered as an evil king who did not seek the Lord with all his heart. The Bible um, didn't say that he didn't set his heart on God, but the Bible says that he did not set his heart on seeking God. So that is a reflection for me, you know, and even for the young people in your pursuit for money, in your pursuit for, um, you know, your career, have we, you know, have we set our heart in seeking the Lord or have we, we just have God in our heart, but not seeking him. There's two different things. So this has been, you know, stirring in my heart and reminding me, you know, what, what is my posture when I spend time with God? Am I just seeking the gifts from his hand or am I, um, am, am I, you know, am I, um, you know, seeking his heart to know what he wants, you know, what he wants to do in, in my life, in my life of my family. So, and also the recent um, passing of, of uh, Queen Elizabeth, it also reminds me the passing of the kingdom from her hand to her, to King Charles and, and also to, and also the, 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 the new leadership, the prime minister in UK, um, you know, these this are a lot of changes in powers and we just want to 
keep them in prayer. I think from us, where we come from, our nation, we have benefited a lot from the gospel, the work of the, the missionaries that are sent forth from, 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 the, um, from UK and um and some of us, you know, from UK, from America, these are the places that send forth missionary to Asian and African nation. And from there, we all, you know, we 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 are um we have received the word, the gospel. So I just want to thought this send spend a few minutes in time just to pray for this nation as the changes of powers happen. So let's come to the Lord in prayer, Heavenly Father. Um, we see the changes of power that's happening over the last few days. Um, the, you know, we just thank you that Lord. Um, uh, UK, British United Kingdom was established um, in your word and the Lord is law and, and all that um, and all is, it's the law of the country is built upon your word and Lord may this continue to be the same Lord that Lord as a, as, as a new um, new um, power uh, comes in place Lord um, we want to ask that you bless the leaders the Prime Minister um, the, the King that's, that's taking uh, over the throne we just ask that Lord you be that voice just as you have spoken you're, uh, you, you, are, you're, you have um, guided um, Queen Elizabeth in her decision making may you do the same for these people may they know your heart may they um, know and listen to you and obey you because we know have seen in history in the, in the history of Israelite, Israel that Lord when they reject you the, the nation goes into a, a spiral downward state and Lord we just want to ask for this nation that has blessed me even my country um, UK United Kingdom is the nation that has brought gospel Lord, to, to my country Malaysia we want to ask that Lord you bless this nation that Lord your word become alive your word is not just some, some ancient and irrelevant but your word is life and your word is applicable yesterday, today and forevermore. That Lord, you will guard the hearts of the leaders that they were all decisions made, Lord, will be guided by your Holy Spirit and that Lord, they will have the fear of the Lord in them. They will seek your face. They will seek you in every decision that is to make. So Lord, we just surrender the nation to your hand and Lord, bless them, Lord, and guide them, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to pass the time now to, to uh, Pastor Jesse. Pastor Jesse, over to you to minister to us. And uh, Lord, may you um, anoint the lips of Pastor Jesse that he speaks what you have placed in his heart. And that Lord, you will um, give him the boldness and the courage to share um, what you have um, you know, uh, anointed him to speak. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Alice. Uh, thank you, Julia. Uh, we thank God this wonderful morning uh, for his goodness and for his mercy, for allowing us to have a new day and to see this wonderful new day. Uh, his grace is sufficient. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, you'll excuse me a bit, my voice is a bit hoarse. I'm just recovering from a cold, but I hope uh, I'm clear enough for you to hear. Um, this morning, I'd like to give God glory. Uh, for his mercy and for his grace. Uh, indeed, we don't take it for granted that we have seen a new day. <clears throat> this is the doing of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Uh, this morning, I would like to go into the word of God. Uh, the word of God is our bread. The word of God is spirit and it is life. And therefore, when we engage in the word of God, we engage in life. We engage in the word of God, we engage in matters of the spirit, uh, which is a blessing. Um, this morning, I'd like to share from the book of Acts, uh, from verse 27. I'll read Acts 4, chapter 4, verse 27. The Bible says, Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in the city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. After they prayed, the place they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. 
<clears throat> Glory be to the name of Jesus. I'd like to share this morning concerning um, what happens when there is difficulties to live the life we have been called to live. What does God do? Or what should we expect from God when we face challenges or difficulties in the area or in the things that God has called us to, to, to do or in the life that Jesus has called us to live? Because there are difficulties and there are challenges as we continue to live the life that Jesus has called us to live. As a husband, you could be facing challenges. As a wife, you could be facing challenges. As a parent, you could be facing challenges. Uh, as a worker, <clears throat> as an employee or an employer, you could be facing challenges. Um, in our neighborhoods, just in general life, in health, whatever area it is, we could be facing challenges. And these challenges, they come against what God has called us to walk into, and they come to oppose the will of God in our lives. Sickness opposes the will of God, which is health. Poverty opposes the will of God in our lives, uh, which is prosperity. Um, all manner of challenges will be coming to oppose that which God has purposed for us. And therefore, because we are not able to determine what comes or what does not come as a challenge to us, then we need to know how to position ourselves or what to expect when these challenges come. The disciples, the Bible says they were called by Jesus and then they were given the mandate, the power and the authority to go to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ into all the world. They were told that uh, they start in Jerusalem, uh, Judea, like we saw last time, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the world. But as they fulfill these purposes, as they walk to do the will of God, as they position themselves to obey the master, we now see uprising that is coming and opposing the will of God, the call of God, um, the purposes of God and the destiny that God has for them in this call. So now they are being opposed. Now there are powers, there are gatherings on the opposite side coming to oppose what these guys are doing. These guys are doing good work. They are preaching the gospel. They are healing the sick. They are casting out devils. They are raising the dead. Everything good you would imagine or you would think. With such kind of mandate, with all that good, with all the great nice things that these guys are doing, that there would not be an opposition. Because who would be opposing someone who is healing the sick? Who would be opposing someone who is casting out devils? Who would be opposing someone who is raising the dead? These are great, mighty works of God. These are good things. They are doing what they are doing because they have been with Jesus. The Bible says everywhere Jesus went, he did good. We are the people who are, who are being told we should not faint in doing good. In other words, they are following hard in the footsteps of the Savior. But Jesus was opposed to, and they will be opposed also. Because in this world, there is a devil, there is Satan who is out to oppose the will of God, the things of God, 
the purposes of God and the destinies that God has for men. And so this is what is going on. And as they charge by the power of the Holy Spirit, as we saw, that when they were filled with the Holy Spirit in the upper room, they came out with boldness. They came out in power. They came out and demonstrated the power of God. Men who were initially afraid, men who were initially cowards, men who could not believe much and had issues in faith, ordinary men. When they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they were able to walk in power. They were able to walk and demonstrate the power of God. And we see that the difference, the one who made this difference is the one Jesus said, do not leave Jerusalem, wait. And the Holy Spirit will come upon you and power. And therefore, when we see this Holy Spirit coming upon them, we see the transformation that has taken place in this man. It is a transformation that was undeniable. It is a transformation that was real. A man like Peter, who just a few days before had uh, said, um, had, had, um, who could not be able to say Jesus, uh, he's be, he'd been with Jesus in front, of, uh, in, in front of a young girl. At this particular point, he is able to come out boldly and declare the gospel of Jesus Christ without fear. And therefore, we see what has happened and they continued to charge the way forward. One of the things that the Holy Spirit will do when he comes upon us is that we will be able to obey. It's not that it will be easy to obey, but we will have the ability to obey. What was impossible now becomes possible. What we couldn't do, we knew we needed to do, but we could not do because of opposition, because of fear, because of intimidation, and just because of the general, the weaknesses of men, now it is possible because we have received power, the power from above, the Holy Spirit. Now, as they continued to do this and continue to charge forward, preaching the gospel, telling people about Jesus of Nazareth, who died and rose up from the grave, and telling the people to believe in that Jesus, those who were opposed to that message, they gathered together and they plotted to stop this man. Because even you, in your faith, there is a plot to stop you. There is a plot that is being hatched to stop you. They are powers that are not happy about your advancement in faith. There are spirits somewhere that are not happy about your advancement in faith. They don't mind you advancing in other areas, but not in faith in God, not in the will of God not in the purposes of God, not in the power of God, not in the destiny that God has called you for. In that, they are determined to oppose you and to stop you. And this is what we see. The Bible says, Herod and Pontius Pilate, together with the Gentiles, and other people of Israel in this city has conspired against your holy servant, Jesus. Herod, Pontius Pilate, met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city 
to conspire against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. And I want to let you know, I believe by now you do know that there is a Herod, there is a Pontius Pilate, together with the host of them that they can gather in your area, in your family, in your life, and they have met to conspire against you. They have met to conspire against the will of God for you. They have met to conspire against the purposes of God for you. They have met to conspire against the destiny that God has for you. And therefore, we are not able to stop this man from gathering, these spirits from gathering, these powers from gathering. But we need to know what should we do ourselves? What is our part in this matter? And this is what we are learning here with the disciples, that as that was happening, what had happened here before it was that when they preached, 5,000 people came to Jesus that particular day. It must have been a great gathering for 5,000 people to come to Jesus in one day. 5,000 people had gathered to, uh, and accepted Jesus. Then a notable miracle had taken place. A man of over 40 years who was crippled, was healed, and he was able to walk. And the Bible says the miracle was undeniable. It was one that could not be denied. This is a man that was known. He is an, uh, an adult. And what had happened is that by the power of God, a miracle had taken place. And people in the city had now come to accept and were now convinced that these men are operating in the power of God. Glory be to Jesus. And therefore, at this particular time, Herod and Pontius Pilate and the others, they met and they were not happy. They were not happy that a man had been healed. They were not happy that a notable miracle had taken place. They were not happy that 5,000 people had come to Jesus. You know, those things that make us happy. These are the things that make us celebrate. These are the things that give us great joy. When we hear a miracle has taken place, a healing has taken place, a deliverance has taken place. When we hear that people have accepted Jesus, even one person, we might not even be able to contain ourselves. We celebrate one person like it is the whole world that accepted Jesus. But we see that there are forces against the same thing. Can you imagine that there is a force somewhere that is not happy of somebody getting healed, of somebody getting delivered, of somebody walking free? of somebody being healed, delivered, and every of these good things that we pray about, believe God for, contend for, these wonderful things. There is power somewhere that are not happy. And therefore they come and they plan to oppose us from all fronts, to silence us. The Bible says, they gathered together, they called the disciples, and they talked among themselves, what do we do with this man? Because everybody now can see that this miracle is undeniable. We cannot even say it is not God because now people do believe that these guys are operating in the power of God. And the Bible said that they decided to call them and warn them so that this thing does not spread any further. I like that place. That so that this thing does not spread any further, this gospel does not spread any further, these miracles don't spread any further, whatever these guys are doing, we need to stop it at its tracks, we stop it here, so that it does not continue any further. You see, there are people who want to put a, foot, a full stop on your advancement. And sometimes it is not people, and I do believe it is not people, it is powers of darkness. <clears throat> they can use people. They can use friends, they can use enemies. But at the end of the day, these are powers of darkness. 
They want to put a full stop to your development in God. They want to put a full stop to your progress in prayer. They want to put a full stop to your progress in faith.